Hello and welcome to this video about the Wheezy Child Under 1 which is basically about bronchiolitis. So by the end of this video I'd like you to feel confident assessing a wheezy infant and I'd like you to know not to prescribe medications and then I'd also like you to be able to grade the severity of a child with bronchiolitis who presents to your emergency department. So the key points to remember are one, bronchiolitis is managed supportively i.e. it doesn't use pharmacological therapies. Oxygen, however, is required uh, when the SATs are persistently below 92%. And then high flow oxygen can be used for either hypoxia that doesn't respond to low flow oxygen or for moderate or severe work of breathing. Now, what is bronchiolitis? Well, bronchiolitis is an inflammatory condition of the small airways, the bronchioles. And the reason it's so important to know that it's inflammatory is that this is not a bronchoconstrictive disease, i.e. this is not a, a treatment that's going to respond well to bronchodilators. So with that kind of pathophysiology in mind, how do we assess a child with bronchiolitis? Well, the Sydney Children's Hospital advises that you look at these things, and I'm gonna go through them in turn, but essentially we're gonna look at the appearance of the child, the respiratory rate, the work of breathing, whether they're cyanosed, whether their oxygen saturations are normal and how much oxygen they need, and then what their, their heart rate and how much can they feed. So the general appearance is essentially a gestalt of how well does the child look from the end of the bed. Do they look normal and happy and playing or do they look really unwell like a sick kid? The respiratory rate, um, again, is kind of fairly intuitive. Children that are struggling to breathe and are really tachypneic probably have more severe disease than those who have normal respiratory rate. Now, same thing goes for worker breathing. And worker breathing is essentially signs that a child is trying to use more force to increase their ventilation. And that means things like nasal flaring, grunting, and then things like tracheal tug, intercostal recession, and subcostal recession. So the more of that you have, particularly grunting, the more severe your work of breathing is. Now with cyanosis is one that you really just shouldn't see unless the child is really unwell. So most kids shouldn't be cyanosed. It's a sign of impending respiratory failure. So if a, cyanose, if a child is cyanosed, then that means they've got severe disease. Same with pallor, actually. So pallor is another really worrying sign because it's, it's a kind of sign of circulatory collapse. So unusual pallor or cyanosis, both worrying signs, both mean severe disease. Now, the oxygen sat should be above 92% in air, and you, you can have very transient mild desaturations and still be mild. So it's sats that are persistently below 92% put you in the moderate or severe categories. Now, once your sats get below 90% on room air, that puts you in severe. And then there's another note that the Sydney Children's Hospital make, which is that if you're needing more than one litre per kilo per minute of high flow nasal oxygen, that puts you in the severe category. So for example, if that's what you require to alleviate your significantly increased work of breathing, that means you're in the severe bronchiolitis category. Heart rate, again, similar to respirate, the, more, the higher it is, the worse. So if you're tachycardic, um, then that puts you in severe bronchiolitis. And now with feeding, the thing with feeding and the reason it's so important is that when a baby is really breathless, they might struggle to feed because they actually can't hold their breath enough to swallow the, the breast milk or the formula. So if they're able to feed completely normally, that probably means they've got mild disease. Whereas if they have decreased feeding, but still more than 50% are normal, that puts them in moderate. And then if they're not able to take 50% of their normal feeds, that puts them in severe. The other thing to remember is that bronchiolitis can get worse over the first three days. So that affects your assessment of severity. And what I mean by that is if you see a child on day one of illness and they look kind of borderline, not sure if they can go home or be, should be admitted, that child should probably be admitted. Similarly, if you saw the same child day four or five, you can be fairly sure that the child is uh, probably close to their maximum severity of disease. And if they're kind of OK to go home now, they probably will do all right. Now, this is a good point to just remember that there are other diagnoses that called, cause wheeze, like anaphylaxis, inhaled foreign bodies. And in, in say, a 10-month-old child who's been picking up some Lego and then one of the pieces might have disappeared or they've suddenly developed a wheeze, then obviously you've got to think about inhaled foreign body. Now, what's the treatment for bronchiolitis? Well, as I said before, it's mostly supportive, meaning you don't use specific medications. There are two things you might need to do. One is oxygen and the other is think about hydration. So oxygen, give it as low flow nasal prongs to maintain their sats above 92%. If that's not working, you have to use high flow nasal prongs, which is a flow rate of over two liters per kilo per minute, which would be your starting high flow rate. 
So you start them at two liters per kilo per minute and then see how much they need. Now you can also use high flow oxygen if the child has increased work of breathing and you can titrate that to their work of breathing. So what you're doing is increasing the flow rate to, to see how much it, it takes for them to have a kind of more normal work of breathing. Now, you also got to think about hydration. So children with mild bronchiolitis can feed normally, so they don't need any specific treatment for hydration. The children with moderate bronchiolitis, they also probably don't need anything, but they, they might need, say, for example, smaller, more frequent feeds, or they maybe are going to need some NG feeding if they're not able to keep up their fluids um, very well over, say, a day or two. Now, children with severe bronchiolitis, you actually want their stomachs empty, so you might put an NG tube down to empty their stomach, or you might at least keep them nil by mouth, but then you're gonna to need to give them IV hydration. So you put a cannula in, give them IV hydration using crystalloid um, at two thirds of their maintenance rate. So key points are bronchiolitis, wheeze under one, is managed supportively without specific medications. The only treatments are oxygen and hydration. Oxygen is required when SATs are persistently below 92%. And high flow oxygen is used for both hypoxia uh, that doesn't respond to low flow nasal prongs and severe work of breathing.